In this video, I will teach you the PowerPoint, Transitions, Tab, and Ribbon in depth. And this video is one in a series in which we look at each of the default PowerPoint tabs and ribbons. Let's get started. So here in this video, I'm going to show you the Transitions tab. The bulk of the ribbon, when you click on Transitions, is taken up by various transitions that you can try between your slides. We do have a preview group here at the left and a timing group. So let's see this in action. Here I have my first slide, and then I've got a slide with an airplane, one with a car, etc. Let's do some transitions between these slides. So if I look up here on the Transitions tab, notice that it says Transition to this slide. So my very first slide, how will it begin? I could make it fade in. That's a very common, kind of subtle transition, but sometimes subtle is exactly what you want. You don't want to distract from your content by having some fancy transition. There are other times when you do want something dramatic, like a wipe, or a split, a push, a reveal. These are all very interesting and unique different kinds of transitions. We've got random bars, we have shape, we have cover, and there are even more transition effects that you can access by clicking here. You can see all of them. Here's crush, that's kind of a fun, interesting transition. Peel off, curtains, and we could just go on and on looking through these amazing transitions that you can use. So let's say I want to begin my slideshow with the curtains transition. That would be a fun way to just open up the presentation and get ready to begin. Now that I've selected that transition that I added to this slide, notice here at the right I have some timing to think about. First of all, do I want a sound to play when the transition is activated? Typically, I do not want a sound to play. I want the participants to be listening to me, not to some bells or chimes or other sound effects. But if you want to try it out, you can set it to applause, click preview, and that is kind of a fun sound effect to go with the curtains opening. Another thing to consider is how long do you want it to take for this transition to happen. Right now, it's set to 6 seconds. That may be just a little long for me, so I'm going to change this to 3.25 seconds. I could apply these settings to all of the slides and all of the transitions, but I don't want to do that, I don't think. So these are some great options that we have here. Now over here on the right, we have some options for how to advance the slide from one slide to the next, activating the transition. How do I want that to happen? By default, it typically is on mouse click. So when you click the mouse button or tap spacebar or the right and left arrows, or if you use a presenter remote, all of those are basically this, on mouse click. In some cases though, you may want to have the slide automatically advance after a certain amount of time. So maybe after eight seconds, I want it to go from slide one to slide two. And of course, if I've set up a transition, it will be activated at that point. So this is perfect for if you want to connect a computer to a TV or a monitor, and you want it to just automatically advance on its own without any work on your part. It's great for like a kiosk or for slideshows at a wedding reception or something similar. Okay, so now I have a transition for my first slide, but let's move on to a second slide. And here in the second slide, I might choose this option here for prestige transition. That's pretty cool. Slide number three, maybe I want to choose conveyor. This is a pretty cool option as well. So some of these transitions are just very dramatic, uh, very cool to look at and fun. One word of caution that I would give you is be careful of the temptation to just add every single transition to your PowerPoint slideshow. Most effective PowerPoint slideshows only have one or two at the most different kinds of transitions, and then you stick to those one or two over and over in that same slideshow. If you do more than that, it's going to be a distraction to the audience. So I would say that in most cases, with most presentations that you build in PowerPoint, you're probably not going to want sound. You're probably going to want the duration of the transition to be fairly short, and you'll want to choose one that's good and interesting, but maybe not a huge distraction. So like this one here, origami. That's pretty cool, but that's going to be a distraction on every slide that you use it on. Maybe I could use this shred option. That's pretty cool, but not super distracting, I guess. And then I could apply it to all of my slides. Like I said, in most cases, that's what you're going to want so that there's a consistent look and feel from one slide to the next. Let's give this a try. Now, I can try out my slide transitions in a couple of different ways. 
I could just click preview here at the left, and that gives me a sense of each slide one by one. I could click now on the third slide, click preview, and get a sense of what that will look like as it transitions from the airplane to the car. But the other way to really look at your transitions and be sure of what the final product will look like is just to start your PowerPoint slideshow. So I'm gonna click here in the lower right corner on the present button, and there's my intro slide to El Transporte. And now if I click or tap the right arrow or spacebar or use a presenter remote, and if you want suggestions on really good presenter remotes, look in the description below the video. I have some recommendations there, but as I transition from slide to slide, you can see this great effect that I'm using. And even though I'm using the same transition each time, it still is a bit distracting. So you need to use your best judgment as you're creating your transitions. Do you want to grab people's attention? Yes, of course you do, but you don't want to distract from the actual substance of your presentation. Okay, I want to finish up by pointing out a couple of additional things. When you're using some of these extra fancy transitions, sometimes you will have effect options. So I've chosen a ripple transition here, but if I go to effect options, I could have the ripple start at the center, or I could choose to have it start in the bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left. All of these options will produce a slightly different effect. Let's try that with this dynamic content option called Ferris wheel. There's Ferris wheel, but if I go to effect options, I can have it start from the left instead of from the right. So definitely check out the effect options that you have. All right, the last thing I want to point out is there are a couple of transitions that give you a very distinct and dramatic effect. And one of those extra special transitions, in my opinion, is this option here, morph. Let's see it in action. So I'm gonna click here on this bus slide and I'm gonna right click on it and duplicate the slide and then I'm gonna move the bus. I'll move it to the left, I'll shrink it down a bit so that it's part way off screen and then I'm gonna click on the second slide and I'm gonna apply the morph transition. Look at the results. As I present this part of the slideshow and transition from one slide to the next, the bus morphs its position and its size from the first slide to the second. So you can do some really amazing effects with the morph transition. Please check out my video that I've posted on the PowerPoint morph function if you wanna learn about it in even more detail and see it in action. So I'm gonna tap escape and remind you that again, this is just one video in a series that's going through each of the PowerPoint tabs and ribbons in depth. This is a great way to make sure that you really do know PowerPoint inside and out. So if you need to learn PowerPoint, definitely watch my beginner's guide to PowerPoint, also PowerPoint for Beginners, the complete course. But beyond that, these in-depth videos on the tabs and ribbons are the next best thing that you can do to really become a PowerPoint master. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support the channel, become a channel member. That's the best way to do it. You could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say thank you to my fantastic super techie channel supporters. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me.